Hey there, Colin Exelby, Certified Financial Planner here, and whew, man, we made it. We made it through last week, which was one of the most volatile weeks we've seen in stock market history. In fact, uh, Thursday was the largest percentage drop since 1987. Now, I've been in the business for 20 years. I was only 10 years old, I guess, at that point, nine years old, man. So, uh, you know, congratulations on making it through. Uh, you know, now we're kind of moving on to the next week. And if pandemics and stock market volatility, if it's got you unnerved, let me tell you, you're not alone. Uh, because whether people admit it publicly or not, many are scared and they do get scared when there's unknown and unexpected events that show up in our lives. And coronavirus, it's no different. Even my six-year-old daughter, Allie, she was asking about it last week. What is it, Dad? Why do these people wear masks? Are they trying to protect themselves or are they trying to protect you know, them from other people? Do they have it? What about that, the people on the cruise ship? What's happening to them? She is six and asking these questions. They're talking about it in kindergarten. And you know, the, I got an email from the kindergarten teacher who was just telling me, hey, we're gonna be talking about this in, in class today. And of course now, they're not gonna be in class for two weeks. And you know, basically things are starting to shut down, businesses are shutting down, working from home. You know, people are gonna learn about what working from home is. Uh, and uh, you know, that'll be interesting to see how, how that works for a lot of families. But what happens from here, uh, you know, related to coronavirus, it's really unknown. Hopefully this gets contained quickly. Uh, I've got full faith that our scientists and medical experts are gonna figure this thing out shortly. We know this ramp up is coming and hopefully they're able to kind of steady that ramp up off sooner than some of these other countries. So we keep the, uh, the, the beds available for those that, that really need it and we don't overburden uh, the doctors and the hospitals around the country. Um, you know, thinking back over the last 20 years that I've been in the business, uh, I will tell you this, every year there is a litany of reasons not to invest money. Um, you know, any time you can go through and you can just write down reason after reason after reason why you shouldn't invest money. Um, the reason to invest, based on history, those reasons pass. And over time, when you look back on them, they're an opportunity that has come and has gone. Um, now, coronavirus has definitely slowed the global economy tremendously. According to a Forbes article back on February 21st, Chinese auto sales are down 90%. In Beijing metro traffic, it's down 91%. Uh, it's really tough to be using public transit and buying cars when you're stuck in your home. And we're about to find out what that's like here you know, globally over the next uh, few weeks, or not globally, but here in the US over the next few weeks. And the question I have to ask myself is, is this temporary or is this gonna go on for months and months and even years? Uh, because that's gonna impact things. And I have no idea, but when I think rationally, I believe this is gonna be a shorter term issue. When there's a data security breach, for instance, at a retailer, um, you know, what happens is typically the, the traffic at that retailer will slow down significantly for a short period of time uh, and then people end up kind of forgetting about it and, and life goes back to normal. Um, my hope is that that's what happens here, but we're going to have a significant slowdown. I think there's no doubt about it. My guess is that we probably have a significant ramp up when this is over of pent up demand to be doing things when people get out and do things, businesses get out and do things. Uh, so I think that is around the corner as well. And that could be the kind of the silver lining. Uh, because in the short term, uh, you know, I think a lot of people and a lot of companies are going to take a hit, but usually they recover. And I suspect this is not going to be any different. Could this be some sort of pandemic like we see in the movies? I mean, I guess so. But at the same time, the world only ends once. And I don't plan to live in fear and I don't plan to invest that way either. So, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about the markets and this market action. Uh, because this volatility has been a little bit crazy. And most people are saying that it's because of the coronavirus. But you know, at the same time, the Democratic primary and Super Tuesday have been going on. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of trade war stuff. There's, there's all kinds of things out there that contribute to volatility. And you know, the news always 
you know, is coincident to whatever the volatility is that's going on, but we really have no idea what is actually causing this stuff. What I do know is after talking with investors over the last three to six months, there are a number of people who have been thinking that a correction was going to come. Well, here it is. The first time since 2008. You know, in most calendar years, the markets you know, fall at least 10% during the calendar year. That's almost every year. Um, and we haven't even been having that. But markets, you know, they don't move in a straight line. And sometimes it's good to be reminded of that. I think there's a lot of investors out there, uh, you know, that haven't been through anything like this before. And so they're going to be learning, uh, you know, this time uh, that markets don't move in a straight line. You don't make money every single day. Uh, and sometimes it is good to be reminded of that. So what do you do? Well, for most investors, really the best course of action is to follow your long term strategy. Hopefully you have one and tune out the noise. Generally doing nothing in this time period is the best thing. It seems like you should be doing something, but generally not doing much is is probably a pretty good idea. And as a reminder, most people out there are not 100% invested in stocks, even though that's what they talk about on the news each night is the stock market. You know, most people don't have 100% of their money in the stock market. And no one says that you must own stocks. You know, stocks are for long term growth. They're not for get rich quick schemes. Again, I think some people out there are probably learning that right now. Uh, you know, you can invest 70% of your money in the stock market or 50% or 30%. Uh, but you should have a long term strategy that's thoughtful and it's based on your goals and your risk tolerance. I always say that the best strategy to have is the one that you will stick with and how you react in this market volatility tells you if the strategy that you have is right for you. You know, it's hard to think rationally in the middle of market declines and when the market surges the very next day, fear and greed often take over. But the people that get ahead are the ones that are able to keep a level head. And a good financial advisor often can help you do that. You know, having a good advisor, a good coach that can keep your eyes looking forward rather than what's going on right at that moment and helping you be objective, you know, that can be incredibly valuable. You know, they say that money is made during bear markets. You just don't realize it for a few years. The decisions that you make right now um, either panicking or making good decisions, you know, those are going to be with you for the next two, three, five, six years. So try to keep a level head out there. Second, don't limit yourself only to the U.S. stock market. Like I said, most people don't have all their money in the U.S. stock market, but there's a number of things that you can, you can invest in to be diversified. No strategy can completely protect investors, but on balance, having diversification, it really helps. Um, you know, if you've got a well diversified portfolio and a sound long term strategy, you're probably weathering this volatility decently at least because other non US stock assets, you know, they've held up pretty well. For those who've been waiting for an opportunity to add to additional growth investments, well, maybe that opportunity is here. Could this get worse? Of course it could get worse. I have no idea. Uh, but at the same time, it kind of feels to me like we've at least had a, a significant wave of selling that maybe is coming towards an end. So, um, you know, based on history, three to five years from now, the markets are most likely going to be higher than they are today. I never advise to catch a falling knife. I never advise to be a hero. I, I, I tell people all the time, if they're thinking about adding money into these markets, have a rules based systematic strategy, whatever that strategy is, and it's appropriate for you stick with it. A lot of times I'll take a strategy of thinking about how much money I would invest over the next year and break it into fifths. And every 10 to 15% the market goes down, I put a fifth of that to work. That way, you're consistently buying at predetermined times to take advantage of the volatility in the markets, and you're not adding money right away and watching it evaporate as the markets head significantly lower. It's a way to be systematic about things, and it helps you when you have a process that's in place. We talk about that a lot with our clients is have discipline, have a process. And think about you know, the business owners that are out there. I'm sure this is going to be tough 
uh, you know, good, you know, people during this time try to support local businesses where we can because they're the ones that are going to be affected the most by this with the shutdowns, with people being at home and not being out and being doing things, you know, wherever we can try to support those local businesses. And we try to help the business owners who are clients of ours through our path toward prosperity financial planning process. And that's really a, one big part of it is preparing for the unknown, preparing your business for the unknown. And goodness, we just had a big unknown. Uh, so if you're, if you're looking for help on the financial planning side, as a business owner, um, you know, we love to talk to you. We love to help you uh, join our community. Make sure you follow us uh, on the blog, see the forest through the trees .com. Make sure you subscribe there. Um, also follow the Facebook page of the Celestial Wealth Management Facebook page. Uh, become part of the community there as I try to keep uh, business owners and our clients, you know, up to speed on what's going on. And remember Warren Buffett's old adage, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. It sounds simple enough, you know, but it's really hard. It's really, really hard. So sometimes having a strategy can help you. Very few people make good, good decisions under duress. Um, I did see a commercial this week, now that there's not any uh, sports on, I'm probably gonna be watching TV a little bit less, but LA Lakers basketball star LeBron James, he is now an, uh, on a commercial for an app called Calm. We as a nation are wired very tight. So make sure to take this weekend, exhale, meditate, get out and exercise, relax. If you can remain rational during this and calm, you'll make better financial decisions. And on a financial planning note, interest rates hit all time lows early this week. They've, they've popped up a little bit here recently. Um, the 10 year rate is just under 1%, the 30 year rate um, it dipped below 1%, which was crazy. It's up a little bit more um, as I'm talking to you today. But you know, take a look at the, if you have debt out there, you know, it might be worth talking to your mortgage broker uh, and taking a look at things to, to see whether it makes sense to do any re refinancing. And if you do have adjustable rates, it might make sense to lock in these rates. Uh, so talk to a professional on that. Um, have a great rest of your weekend and uh, I will talk to you soon.